Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today, we're working on this. That's right, we finally got a 3D printer. Actually, I've had this for a few years now. A friend of mine gave it to me. It needs some work. As with the theme of the Save It For Parts channel, we're not just going to go out and buy a 3D printer. We have to get an old broken one to fix up. Now, this one supposedly has some issues. I don't know what yet. It's um, one of the early models that's all made from a kit. It's all kind of laser cut and assembled out of various stuff. I think this might be the type of thing that if you learn enough how to print it, you can print another one just from the 3D printer and some parts from Axeman. We also have a big old box of the plastic stuff that you feed these things with. Now again, I've never actually used a 3D printer myself, so I really have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to these. Um, I know some of the basics, I've done some 3D modeling before, so I'm pretty sure I can create something on the computer, send it to this, and maybe end up with a giant blob of plastic, or maybe end up with a cool model. We don't know yet. I should also mention, this is living in my garage right now, because I've heard these things can be a little smelly. They can stink like burning plastic, especially these early models, so it doesn't get to live inside the house yet, even though the garage isn't the best environment for a sensitive prototyping device like this. There's a lot of dust, the temperature fluctuates out here, so if it smells good enough, it can come live in the basement. But for now, we're just going to be testing it out here in the garage. So this is a printer board printer bot, uh, Rev D from 2012. So again, it's definitely not new. This is an older one. This is a, a very early experimental one. A lot of the parts are made out of these uh, laser cut pieces of wood. Some of the parts are 3D printed. Uh, a lot of the parts are just generic hardware store screws and bolts and whatnot. And then there are one or two things like these motors that you'd have to actually go out and source from uh, the internet or from whatever probably rob them out of other equipment. Um, some of these belts might be kind of standard. Some of the belt guards are just washers. And uh, yeah, again, a lot of this is just very standard hardware store stuff. So this is a very relatively simple 3D printer. And the power supply here is an old computer power supply. So hopefully there's not all that much that can go wrong with this. Hopefully I can get it working. We've even got this fun little uh, filament stand holder thingy that the prior owner put together. Well, we do have a green light on the brain board, at least. As usual, we're using only the best of dumpster dive laptops. All right, we found some 2013 era 3D printer software. Let's see if it'll do anything. Well, it says the printer is online. It looks like we can do some stuff with it. Sure seems like it mechanically works. At least the X, Y, and Z axis. Oh, hey, goo is starting to come out. I think that's a good sign. All right, so it seems each individual function of this 3D printer works. I've downloaded some royalty-free examples from Thingiverse. Let's see if it can handle them. I've, again, I have never done this before, so I don't know what it's doing. I don't know how long it'll take to um, process this file into something it can actually print. It looks like it's uh, slicing right now, whatever that means. We've switched filaments over to the black because I have a lot of black. Don't have as much green, so we're going to use up the one that I have the most of uh, to screw around with first. All right, so things are definitely happening. It's singing a happy little song to itself, and plastic seems to be coming out in the general shape of the item I want printed. It remains to be seen whether this will become a 3D print or just a mass of molten plastic. While this thing is certainly attempting to print an object, it looks a little choppy. I don't 100% know if that's because this is a Gen 1 machine or because there's something wrong with it. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what the final product looks like and see if it looks even remotely like what I'm attempting to print. Those sure are some great noises it makes. While the thing keeps stuttering and pausing and the software screen keeps going blank and saying it's not responding, it hasn't actually crashed yet, but uh, it's not having a very good time of it. Every time it does one of these pauses, I think the emitter tip is just sitting there melting the surface of the plastic, so I don't expect we're going to get any detail out of this print. All right, well, it went back to working at full speed all of a sudden. I'm pretty sure one of the layers has been uh, irretrievably melted, though, so... 
this is going to be probably a pretty potato print. All right, we seem to have a finished print. Let's see if I can remove it from this tape. I think that's why the tape is here to uh, assist in removing it from the heated bed. I don't. I don't actually know. I just kind of went with there being tape here and put more tape on the spots that it was missing. Honestly, neither the tape or the heated bed seem to really help with getting this off of here, so I'm not sure what you're supposed to do with it. Okay, so there is our finished 3D print slash melted pile of plastic. Um, I have to say, a 2012 era printer bot printer, yeah, I don't know. It seems like it works, but kind of a potato, very prototype, um, very inaccurate. Again, I don't know if this is because there's something wrong with the device or because it's just from 2012 and it's made out of Lincoln Logs, but um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I could see this being useful for some kind of rapid prototyping where I don't need high precision, but I think if I want anything uh, prettier or if I want like precision parts, we're going to have to do some upgrading. Alright, so I think I found the problem with this 3D printer. Uh, more of a design flaw than uh, damage, but right here kind of the uh, XYZ home position, the print head sits, and during each print a little bit of extra material gets left there. So after a while, there's kind of this blob of plastic, and when the printer homes itself, the print head sits on that blob, gets kind of hung up there, the motors keep driving, and these little nuts right here actually get driven out of their little wooden sockets, and so the z-axis has no more uh, play. It just pops the nuts out and then this doesn't go up and down anymore. So that seems to be the only real issue with this thing. And again, it's just a, a flaw in the design of this where after that blob builds up, it's possible for this to, to push its own pieces apart, basically. You can lift it up, you can screw them back into position. It seems like it still works after that. So, yeah. Um, just basically have to remember to clear that blob every time and then um, put that back together if and when it pops itself apart. Alright, somebody suggested that I try the standard 3D printer torture test, Benchy. A little tugboat that's uh, apparently designed with a lot of very complicated areas, a lot of problematic things that will kind of tell me what's wrong with the printer, what's not wrong with the printer, what can it do, what can't it do. So we're going to let that sit there and print and see how much of a blob it turns out. Alright, so our Benchy the Benchmark tugboat um, seems to have just kind of gone nuts here, repeating the same layer over and over. So it got to about this point and then it just, uh, I guess, decided to go nuts in the z-axis. So I've stopped this print, uh, we've wasted enough material on it. Kind of interesting with that, I'm not sure why that happened, if that's a software issue or... Uh, what the deal is exactly. It definitely also had some issues here with uh, material just kind of falling off. That overlapping area doesn't work very well on this printer. The um, layers of material just kind of droop and sag. So uh, a complex 3D shape like this, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work very well for this printer. This is a two-part piece. Uh, this is one print and this is another print. They sort of clip together here. I did have to take the Dremel and do some cleanup on this interface so it actually fit. And then I had to sand these edges down because they were a little blobby. But this little dingus is supposed to be a center finder. So if you have a round thing like this metal stock, you can uh, pop that on there. Theoretically, you'll find the center with this little tool, but it uh, doesn't look like it actually works all that well. So maybe this particular 3D printer isn't appropriate for anything that needs precision like this. All right, so our second-hand uh, first-generation 3D printer here does technically work. Um, it works better on simple, flattish objects, like our manhole cover here. Uh, as long as you don't care about fine detail or precision, and there's still some lumpiness around the edges. Um, there's definitely some blobs here and there, but uh, for something like this, that doesn't really matter too much. And we can actually make slightly more complex devices out of multiple uh, flat shapes clipped together. Again, it needed some trimming uh, in some of these spots, but um, yeah, you, you can make some complex stuff with it if you're willing to do it in sections. Making anything more complex than that 
uh, definitely seems to be beyond the capabilities of this printer. It, like I said, it blobs, it, it falls over, and then for some reason it just gets stuck doing infinite Z repetition with this one. I did try another little um, figurine here, or uh, tabletop game figure. Again, a lot of issues with any overhangs, a lot of drooping, and uh, kind of delamination of layers here. The detail is not very good. You can kind of tell this is a little archer, but uh, yeah, there's no real features on it. And again, there's there's some issues with the print. All right, so for my first foray into the world of 3D printing, this thing is uh, working well enough. It's definitely interesting. It's maybe not the best introduction to uh, this field since it is kind of a potato. Even when it's working correctly, it can't really do anything complicated, can't do anything precise, can't do anything with any detail. But hey, I can do simple shapes, I can do flattish things. I bet I can still find some applications for it that uh, stays within the boundaries of what it's able to do. And then you know what, maybe we'll get a slightly better one and see what happens with that. Although, I still don't want to pay full price, so we're going to keep an eye out at auctions, at uh, surplus sales, etc. If anyone happens to be familiar with the printer bot uh, Generation 1 here and knows how to tweak it, how to make it do more stuff, please let me know in the comments. Again, I am not an expert with these, I don't know much about them. And this thing's so old that it's hard to find good reliable info on it. Everything's from uh, 10 or more years ago. So it's hard to tell what really works with this and uh, what just exceeds the limitations and requires a better printer. I know this wasn't much of a project video since I didn't really do a whole lot with this thing other than turn it on, test it out, adjust some of those nuts that were popping out. But um, yeah, mostly it was just experimenting with this thing. I hope to be able to use it for some of my future projects make some simple shapes, make some simple parts. We'll see what we can do with that. And you can stay tuned to see what we end up doing with this thing in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.